Crispin dimension door to the other side of a wall that we could see through arrow slits and took a wand of secrets, mm -hmm. is what you told him to write down in his inventory. Mm -hmm. And um, then we stopped. All right. So, you guys are at the Amber Temple, and let me just zoom out on the map so I can see specifically where. All right. And uh, on the map, big thing here, X4. So, uh, as you guys uh, begin to take the staircase uh, down into the foyer, and for look at the Amber Temple, you see how there are actually like two levels here. There's like a level right here that's about 20 feet higher than down here. And there's stairs on the left and right. But uh, a 20 foot wide balcony of black marble and shattered railing overlooks a vast temple. Black marble staircases at the end of the balcony descend 30 feet to the temple floor. The vaulted ceiling is 30 feet above the balcony. The walls of the are covered in amber glaze, blending a loop of golden steel. The center amber door stands close to the west end of the balcony, and a similar pair on the east end of the balcony. So, and there. Those are uh, amber doors, you said? Um, yes. Okay. Room is either black or ever. Just leave here. It is. As you look in front of you, you can see a uh, 40 foot tall statue. This one, surprisingly, is carved out of granite as opposed to amber. And it depicts a, uh, a piece of entity. What does it depict? A faceless entity. Its hands are outstretched, mm -hmm. and in between the hands, you see a giant orb. But you, like, it's just, it's a black rotating orb. There's like little things that look like sunspots coming in and out. But yeah. Is it like a hooded robed figure like the amber um, statues were in the hall? Nope. Like, you know, uh, the N1 t-shirts back in the 1990s? Right. Yeah. Uh, the face looks like that. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to go over to the top. Like a My parents' dog. All right, guys. We have door to the left, door to the right. Just set the balcony and meet the uh, the giant statue. Um. Do we like? Do do, do I see anybody in this like great hall area? Uh. This moment, you do not. Uh, perception check for me, though. All right. That's pretty good. Plus, uh, so 22. 22. So, uh, on the bottom part portion of this, uh, uh, like, what's underneath the overlook, on this, you can see a number of decayed bodies. 
Uh, okay. In similar decay of the wizard that Crispin found, uh, the one of secrets on, um, however, the skulls have all been bleached white. Interesting. Everything else is grit, grime on their pristine skulls. Hmm. And roll another perception check. Um, 17. So one of the things that's interesting here is that the skulls do not appear to be fallen in a natural place. Uh, it appears like it's either been manipulated or set up in a way that there's no possible way anybody would have died in that position. Hmm. Uh, I uh, relay that information to the party. Um, there's, uh, there's a bunch of, of like dead bodies down there with their skulls. Um, it looks like they've been altered in some way. Uh, so I don't think that we're alone here. And uh, it seems like something or someone is maybe doing some collecting. Um, that being said, I think I would like to um, quietly walk up to the door on the left and try to um, quietly open it and peek inside. All right, that's 15. So I'm going to have you do a uh, listen check on this, which will be a D20 plus your proficiency bonus plus your, let's call it your wisdom bonus to see exactly how well you can position yourself without um, without giving your position away. Okay. What is my proficiency bonus? Level four. Okay. Or plus four, I mean. Um, that is a 21. All right. Um, as you approach this door, you begin to hear sounds. Uh, you'll, you'll remember from the last time we played almost a month ago that from over here, you're able to hear sounds, and there was a uh, secret path that mm -hmm. I had displayed and didn't draw. Um, but you'll remember there are one, six, uh, like you remember six different human voices. And one wolf uh, in there, and uh, they're in order to keep it short. Uh, they're talking about um, uh, different things that they raided. They appear to be real bandity types. Okay, you said it was six people and a wolf. Yes. Okay. So at that point, because you did so well on the spot listen check, or uh, not spot listen, just on your uh, uh, listen check, is you were able to do that just by placing your ear on the door before you went through. Okay. Um, is there, like, a lock on the door? There is not. There is not, okay. I was going to try to lock them in. <laughs> One through the complete trope where you just stick something in, because those doors do swing out into the balcony. Ooh, perfect. Do we have something to to bar this door with? I'm sure Tony's got stool components. <laughs> uh, I have a staff. Is Tony, do you do you have anything uh, special for that other than other than Leavin's staff, just in case the wood snaps? I would be if I was here. What do you mean you're not here? Uh, his token isn't on the map, but you are here. You did come yeah. with us up the mountain. I did not know that. Yeah, you're there. Nobody tells me anything. Um, I do have wood stools. Birds. I should still have my crowbar that I recovered. If we wanted to jam that in there. Um, they have that grappling hook still. Uh, let me check my bag of holding real fast. I didn't have that one open, surprisingly enough. Uh, one thing we could do too, um, if we wanted to, um, if 
we wanted to take these guys on, we could uh, put a spike growth in front of the door lay of in, and I can use uh, prestidigitation to make like faint musical notes that would draw them out. Do you want to do that? I, mean, I was saying if if that's what you guys want to do, we can we can do, give that a shot. I don't think that we necessarily need to fight these guys. Not right now. Mostly I got a bunch of wood rods and a hammer. So honestly, I could go all the way around the door and jam that fucker. Uh, Tony, make a common sense check. Uh, this will be a uh, D20 plus your wisdom plus your proficiency. D20 plus wisdom plus proficiency. All right. 12 plus, where did it go? 15... You're getting the idea. Yeah, you're getting the idea. If you do that, uh, the mere fact of hammering a nail will probably draw attention to the door before you're finished. Oh, let's see what else I got. Well, let's just uh, let's let's go with Laven's idea then, and, and use the the staff to bar it if we can. Well, I do have a tower shield that we could jam underneath the door handle. Again, that would probably be pretty loud. I'm saying like a doorstop wedge beneath below the door handle and into the floor. Just gotta do it quietly. Do Is like anybody home alone shit? Like what was that, Jay? You know how malleable Amber is? Moderately. No. Depends if it's warm. Yeah, I thought it was like hard as stone. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. I just wanted to make sure that I knew before I <laughs> did a rule. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely I mean, uh, more dense. Or more loud, but it will make sound, yes. That's what I'll rule. Um, I think we could probably achieve the same effect with, uh, with the staff um, without having to potentially make noise. Like, even if I put the shield up, I think it might... There might be too high of a chance of making noise. Works for me. And, uh, just a heads up, guys. I put a dotted line over where the uh, balcony will end. Okay. Yeah. So I figured that would have been helpful to know. Sure. Yeah. All right. So um, who is going to place the uh, staff in to bar the door? Yo. All right. What I would like you to do is make a dexterity check. Um, actually, slide a hand. Let's do slide a hand to see exactly how well you can uh, put that staff in without making noise. Slide of hand. Uh, 17. 17. Oh, my God. It, like, it, it was like some David Blaine magic <laughs> there. Like, if, like, you're sitting around the staff, you're like, just... Keep your eye here, and eventually the staff was gone because it went into your other hand and just slid it in. And Esmeralda is mesmerized by this feat. Like, it was crazy. Uh, I wink at her. Ooh. <laughs> Some inner party romance. <laughs> yeah. Make a charisma check. My charisma's bad. Uh, eight. Eight? Uh, it's... <laughs> Out of fear of having an NPC just go off on you, uh, you try to blink, but you end up just blinking, like blinking, but your eyes were offset with the timing. <laughs> so it, it literally just goes like you put that in, and then it's left, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, she looks confused. <laughs> all right, that awkward display display completed. Uh, I'd like to go across to the other door now. Okay. Checking the map. Checking the map. That brings us to six. There is no six. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <clears throat> that actually happened in Horde of the Dragon Queen, though. Yeah. There was a room description for a room that wasn't on the map. It was secret. <laughs> <laughs> I go ahead and make another uh, um, listen check for me, just like we do with you. 
Okay. Um, that is a 17. 17. You don't hear anything. And uh, part of it was, well, I should take it back. You do hear some things. Uh, it was the um, life forms in the room over on the west end here. And then you just put your finger in your ear so that you can hear what's going on with your other ear in this room. And then you hear nothing. Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, like stealthily open the door then. Okay, make a slide of hand check uh, to see what you can do with the door making noise and then a stealth check for yourself. Okay. Um, okay. So it's slide of hand and then stealth? Yep. All right. All right, so the sleight of hand is a 20 adjusted. Okay. And the stealth check uh, is a 27. Okay. Yeah, that all gets through. So as you open up the door, uh, this room is featureless except for a rough edge, 10-foot diameter circular hole in the floor to the east and an empty torch sconce that lines the wall. Double doors of amber stand to the north and the west, where the west is the one through Curly Station. Mm -hmm. Here is the door to the north. Okay. Uh, a single closed door lies just south of the western set of double doors. So there's another door down here. Um, yeah, so there's there's a door that connects these two rooms together. Oh, okay, and that's okay, and that's where the secret uh, entrance was that um, yeah. Crispin found. The Wand of Secrets. And then Crispin actually just comes out of this room himself and goes, uh, let me see how well I can do Crispin's voice. Uh, guys, I've figured out how to use the, the Wand of Secrets. It's, it's pretty uh, close, but you didn't have enough teeth in your mouth. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to get a second roll of teeth. <laughs> uh, he sits there and goes, um, if, you, if you hold this wand, you can... Uh, Sit there and, and scan it around and let you know where secret doors and traps are. Ooh. Now, I feel like I need to sit here and write this down in my journal. Guys, by the way, I started keeping a journal. Um, go guard the door. And then you guys keep on going through here. Okay. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Straw did it. It seemed like a good idea. I'm sure I can do a better job than he can. I hope so. Oh, um, in my journal. Can, can all right. Um, I'd like to uh, look in that uh, hole. You said it was like a 10-foot wide hole in the floor, right? Yes. Um, let me see the other floor to see if that comes down all the way. I'm still doing this stealthily, by the way. X33A. Uh, as you look down, um, here's here's the weird part about this. As you look down, it looks like there's a sarcophagus, and the hole leads like right in the center of this room that has the sarcophagi in it. Um, however, there appears to be some force field right over here, and let me draw a circle for that actually. And uh, there's like a bunch of dust. There's like floating. Um, skulls that do not look to be animated right now, uh, but they're kind of just bouncing on the periphery of what looks to be a force field. And that force field is above the the coffin, you said? The force field is like halfway through the hole. Hmm. So it's like a head fell in there, and then it like just blah. Because <laughs> you know exactly how useful blah is. Right. <laughs> And you said the hole in the floor had, like, jagged edges, right? Like, it's not supposed to be there? Like, the floor broke? Uh, it, it's almost like there was somebody who tried to uh, uh, crypt rob. Mm. So there's, there's like, some shovels around, a pickaxe or two. Um, surprisingly, there's an, a skeleton that has an arrow in the knee. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, like, sort of whisper loudly back into the hallway, like, guys. I found something. 
Roll a luck check, just a D100. Okay. Uh, 94. Okay, keep on going. <laughs> we'll save that roll for later. Uh-oh. Um, I'm still pretty new at this magic thing, so maybe someone who has uh, a good sort of uh, knowledge of, of the arcane uh, maybe try to determine what's the deal with his force field. Uh, Hagrid? I think Hagrid or, or Tony, maybe both. I'll come give it a shot. I'm already guessing it's uh, magical in nature, so I'm not going to do detect magic. Can I just make an arcana check on it? Absolutely. Uh, no. Yep. Oh. Yeah, fuck. Um, how about a 26? So, uh, what doesn't really catch your eye um, is the force field on this. It's more the skulls. Uh, the force field is basically your, your any barrier that can be done. It's just the, the interesting part of the barrier is that it has been, in your mind, up for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, um, which is a feat to whoever casts the spell. But it, what really catches your attention are the bleached white skulls on here. Uh, you know these uh, through some, some of your early training as a wizard, not so much as an artificer, as flame skulls. These are characters that, or these are creatures that, um, after they died, a uh, necromancer had enchanted a spell onto them so that when a certain trigger is met, they can animate, um, in, and they look like Ghost Rider and uh, can act as a uh, defense system. Gentlemen, uh, delving into the depths of my psychotic mind, I have remembered that these are created by necromancers, specifically the skulls, that is, and there is some kind of a trigger to activate them, and they turn into these flaming balls of death that make horrible noises, and they try to kill you. Uh, you also remember that uh, they sometimes scream, not the bees. <laughs> <laughs> and they sometimes scream, not the bees. <laughs> I think you made that last part up. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, just so you know, those things, any bleached white skulls we see floating around, probably going to try and kill us if we find a way to activate them. By the way, Tony, make a luck check. Uh, Deep one. You know what you get. A D one hundo. Yep. Okay, let's see here. Um, let's go with a seventy two. All right. Proceed as you were. You're feeling lucky. Do we want to piss him off? I think we should piss him off. I don't, I don't think we should piss him off. Uh, Tony, on this one, you will know is that uh, the the spell for flame skulls is regenerating if you do not remove the enchantment on them you basically buy an hour all of the experience yeah, yeah except okay. we don't get experience points right now <laughs> i agree we shouldn't piss them off um it's only because you rolled like 25 plus in arcana that i'm telling you this <laughs> <laughs> um well thank you Hagrid, do you think that we should uh, head down to the lower level of that great hall or check the um, amber double doors to the north of the room that uh, we're in? Hagrid? What? Do you think that we should uh, proceed down to the lower level of this great hall or check these doors to the north uh, in this room? Either. I don't care. Okay. Um, well, you, so um, you said that there was like a bunch of those bleach white skulls down in the lower level, right, Jay? There were three that you could make out. 
Okay. Um, in this room are all the ones that are are all the bleach white skulls inside that force field. Yes. You just kind okay. of jump around like a uh, like a popcorn curl right before it pops is kind of the motion that these skulls are having. Okay. Um. All right. I guess I'll uh, see if I can hear anything behind this door before trying to open it. Okay. That puts us at eight. Uh, yeah, you don't even need to make a roll. There's nothing that you can hear in there. Is that uh, as you open up, this is just uh, part of the hall. Once again, this kind of overlooks down here, uh, but there's a railing that goes right along the western side of this hall. Uh, it's uh, glazed amber, covers the walls of this 20-foot-wide, 70-foot-long arch corridor. The amber doors at both ends of the hall stand open. The closed doors in the middle of the east wall and three arrow slits are cut into the wall across from it. Cracks in the black marble floor run the length of the hall. So the doors that you'll have... Um, so, set of open doorways right there. Oh, come on. And right there. Uh, they just kind of look like archways. Closed okay. doors right here. And open doors right there. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, let's go down there and see what we see. Um, the cracks in the marble floor. Can I? Is there any way I can like check for traps? Oh, you certainly can. It's almost like someone gave you a wand of secrets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you can either use the wand of secrets and deplete one of its three charges, or you can uh, make an investigation check. Um, I think we'll go with the investigation check. All right, make your investigation check. That is an 18. <clears throat> an 18. Uh, as you come by, like, there's... The cracks here don't have, like, a particular footstep to it. It doesn't have a pressure plate. It looks like there's something here that had a incredible amount of weight... Uh, that stood there for a long time. If they were trying to repair something, uh, build something, or that was just where it was stationed for the longest time. Um, based off of what you've encountered in the past, uh, you know that there's some sort of uh, golems that can be that heavy, um, but for based off of a lack of footstep, you have no way of knowing for sure. You just know something of incredible size and weight once stood there. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then I'll venture out onto the into the hall to oh, check. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, check the this these closed doors here. Actually, you said there was arrow slits in the wall. Yep. Uh, can I look through the arrow slit? You certainly can. Um, I'm not going to make a check on this is that you can see uh, a brightly lit chamber. Um, there are red copper, or brown copper in my mind, lanthorns that hang from the ceiling. Uh, the walls are sheathed in amber that has been shaped into uh, reliefs of wizards with spell books. Uh, stairs to the north and south descend 20 feet into an obsidian lectern, behind which a slab of black slate hangs from the chains. Between the stairs are descending rows of red, brown marble benches. Um, what this looks like is kind of like a lecture hall. And, uh, you can see that there is like a little, like the lectern, which would be kind of like right here. Uh, you see some like, what looks like a, um, like a hideout, uh, behind it. Like there's some linens, uh, some 
food hanging up to dry. Yeah. Okay. Um, do I hear anybody in there, though? That one I'm going to need to make a listen check for. Okay. Uh, an 18. No. All right. Um, I think that there's uh, somebody. So it's like a, a lecture hall in here, and I think that there's somebody living in there, and it's probably. I think it might be one of those bandits. Uh, based off of what you see, is it looks like um, it is one individual. Right. Like it could be like one of like one of them like comes here to go to bed or something like that. There's like food hanging up to dry and stuff. Yeah, but it's a lecture hall. Singular person. Right. Mm-hmm. Could be like the head bandit. So Esmeralda at this point comes in. It's like so. That's a case. Do we want to remove the head? And might be easier to fight the others if there's no chain of command. That's a possibility. What do you guys think? Well, we did buy ourselves some time by barring the doors shut with the, the masses of them. But we run into the odds of pissing off the skulls by making too much noise. If that's what the trigger is. If. Well, then I have one question for us. Are we feeling lucky? <laughs> Always. I think we can try to take out one guy. Okie dokie. <clears throat> well, here's what I'd recommend. Is there any way that we can do it quietly? And then if we need to, um, we all attack him at once. I mean, that's uh, always an option. Because I think the most dangerous time for us is if, as soon as we enter the room, there's some way that we can do it without anybody realizing I think we'll be all right. Or we can just scream it's over. We have the high ground. <laughs> I like that option. Um, I'd like to uh, quietly try to open the, the door. Okay. Uh, based off of the way your numbers have been, uh, if you just take the average, you'll be fine. Okay. I'm done making you roll almost 30s. <laughs> So, right. as the door, yeah, as the door opens, uh, you get to see here is that these wizards were kind of um, really needed help with their interior design um, because everything here looks like it's like a San Francisco 49ers uniform, um, but it's like everywhere. It just it, It's like so much sensory information to your eyes that they kind of burn a little bit. And then there's the black turn. <laughs> uh, now that now that uh, like the room is open, and I'm in it. Am I able to see um, like a person in here at all? At that angle, no. Oh. Um, however, as like as Meraldo will come down here and just sit there and uh, is like giving you Navy Seal hand signals. Uh, you're not quite sure what they mean because I. At a certain point, you believe she's just making up signals, but you get the general idea of you check that side, I'll check this side. Okay. And then to speed things up, as you get there, uh, um, you see that there is um, one individual. Uh, there's kind of like scorch marks all over his face and head. His hair, while originally black, has got bald burn marks uh, on the top uh, back, giving him a, like a sort of monk haircut. And then right there, like almost dead center, but it's a little bit to the right. Uh, this individual is wearing 
Uh, a singed cloak. Um, hold on one second. Uh, like it's just his skin is just blistered everywhere with uh, from fire, and he just um, at this point wakes up due to Esmeralda goes like, no, no, wait, 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 and there you go. So like this dude is like a burn victim, but he's still alive. Yes, like the hound. <laughs> he doesn't get that reference, but I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, he just sits there, and goes like, "Okay, okay, let's not do anything rash here. I left you guys on your side." The Amber Temple. I'm just here looking for stuff. Let's just go back to our original agreement. Unless you guys want some charred rat, as he points towards the food drying. We, we have an agreement. Were you not the the angry people on the other side? I think he's talking about the bandits. Oh, great! There's a third party here. Um. Yeah, I'm. My name is uh, Valinus, and uh, how do you do? I shake your hand, but you guys might attack me if I make a sudden movement. Say, Valinus is his name. Valinus, yes. This is typically when you share your names. His hmm. name sounds like an STD. <laughs> um. Well, Valinus, you don't. We're not here to attack you. Um, my name's Lucian, and uh, I'm with a group. Uh, we call ourselves uh, NASA. Um, we are here at the Amber Temple because uh, we're looking for some information. Oh, I, I'm actually looking for things here. Um, my master uh, used to work here, uh, Jakarian, and I was hoping to get his staff and his spellbook. And and then and then I'll be out of here. It just this place is kind of dangerous. Um, what happened to your master? Do you see what happened? Like, do you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> uh, I'm guessing it's probably those uh, dormant flaming skulls. No, it's what killed Jakarian. Uh, just imagine a giant column of fire coming down from the heavens, and you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hagrid, that sounds like one of your abilities. I had that last <laughs> Tuesday over the chamber pot. <laughs> uh, he rolled a natural 20 on his uh, intelligence saving throw and realized not to answer. <laughs> Um, uh, so, uh, Valinus, are you, um, like, are, are you a member of this, this Amber Temple that we're in? Uh, no, no, the, the Amber Temple, um, hasn't been in its natural operation for a very long time. I don't know specifically how long, but, um. It was essentially one of the most powerful arcane areas in Barovia. Like everything that was deemed too dangerous to to be out among the general public was sealed away in here. And there were wizards um, far far stronger than I that kept it all uh, shut. And, and can I put my hands down? Now? Are you still going to kill me? I'm not going to kill you. So I can't put my hands down. Yes. I don't remember asking you to put them up. Well, that's fair. As he slowly puts his hands down, it's like the reverse of Ricky Bobby uh, in the <laughs> interview, is that he's just trying to do his best to not show any aggressive movements whatsoever. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that weird black orb that that statue is holding out there. Yeah, that interested me as well. 
Um, Yeah, I don't know what's in there. I thought and he like opens up and he shows like a little necklace and it has an upside down V um, on it. And it's made, ironically, of gold as opposed to amber. He goes like, this is the only thing that wasn't amber that I came in here. And I have no idea what it does. We can always try to see if it turns off that orb. Who wants to take that? <laughs> what uh what what do you do what what is your profession I will. i'm an apprentice wizard How's you're just here looking happen? for your master's staff and spell book yeah i can't join the wizard's council without it what kind of good wizard doesn't have a staff tony maybe that's what your problem is oh i got a staff if you had other <laughs> Mostly chamber pots. Um, uh, I, I'll be right back. I really gotta run to the bathroom. Oogie. No, I'll just go in the corner. <laughs> Ring of fire. It's yeah. It's what Quatsit does. Who the hell's Quatsit? Oh yes. Um, he likes to hide whenever scary things happen, and he just goes like. Come down, buddy. And you see as this creature just appears out of thin air, it's like kind of impish. Um, about maybe the size, like maybe one foot tall, but it's got three feet long wings and two little horns uh, on top. And it just comes down and it perches onto his shoulder. Um, doesn't say anything, but just goes like, yeah, this is this is Quatsy. Yeah. I'm not good at coming up with names, but uh, Aquats is just a type of of um, companion for for some of the wizards in our uh, our well defunct order. Now that Jakarian's dead, and what's the name of the defunct order? Uh, Jakarian's Joe Wizards. I can understand why you guys are defunct. Quality writing right there. All yeah, right. it's in the book, but I just had to come up with something quickly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, have you tried activating the silly amulet yet? I don't. Well, no, because barbarians kind of were well barbarian-y. Yeah, poke it with a stick. Here, and I figured, what's the one place they wouldn't want to go into? And I sat there and realized it was anywhere with books or learning, and that's why I took this. Um, that'd probably be the first place they'd go to destroy, in my opinion. I'm back. <laughs> what, were you a barbarian in another life? Uh, I think so. I mean, as I stare at my tattoo. Feels like it. Welcome back, Corey. We were, we were having a talk about the jabronis getting uh, defuncted. Uh, by jab what do you mean by jabronis? Like, who are you talking about? <laughs> the order this wizard's from is the... the Jacarian. Yeah. Uh, no doubt named after your master? Uh, yeah, duh. <laughs> Ready to go and sleep. Um, so, uh, what have you, like, where have you been in this, in this, uh, building? Um, this is about as deep as I went. Um, I went and there's that room to the south and it had the hole in it and there's some bouncing skulls. I thought, no, no, not today. Uh, I checked out the statue. There's a big spitting orb of darkness. I was like, no, not today. And then I found this lecture hall. It didn't seem like anything scary was in here. So I go, today. How long have you been here? Um, enough to get hungry. Kind of lost track after a while. Does nobody want to ask about 
Oh, wait. He told us. Never mind. <laughs> the burns? Yeah. I think it was the giant column of fire. Yeah, that's probably what it was. <laughs> yeah, um, I kind of messed up and cast it a little bit too close. Oh, you did it yourself. I, did I tell you how I was learning? So wait, you accidentally killed your master? If you want to put it that way, yes, absolutely that. Oh, how would you put it? No, 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 the way you put it was just fine. <laughs> All right, well, um, you know, you are, you are here searching for things, and we're here searching for answers, so uh, for the time being, why don't we search together? Strength in numbers, right? I, I got no argument against that. Okay. Just keep your giant f columns of flame away from me and my party. Uh, yeah, I, I decided not to use that spell again. Um, I, as he opens up his spell book, you see, like, torn pages out, and it goes like, yeah, see, right there, no spells anymore. Well, not that spell anymore. I've got others. Should we, like, take that away from him? Well, I mean, he needs it. Right. I want to scoop up the pages of spells that he tore out. Uh, I, I tore them out before I came here. Um, you can go back to the Wizard of Wines and pick up those pages, assuming there hasn't been a wind since then now. Can we kill him and away. steal his, spell, his spell book? I'd appreciate that if you... <laughs> I don't think that'd be worth it. But then we solve two problems. He doesn't have a spell book, nor can he cast them. Yeah, and then I can't breathe either. I thought you guys were supposed to be helpful. I think, I think you're just creating different problems, Tony. Eh, different problems, same day. The, the gnome doesn't speak for the group. Why does he speak at all? Don't trust. We've been gnome. asking that question for a long time. He's got split <laughs> personalities. Wait, you're disagreeing with yourself now? We're all gonna die, aren't we? Just you know, don't stand in front of Tony, and you're fine. Or behind, <laughs> or to the left, or to the right. Let's go look at that other door to the north. Or into this open. You said this one was open, right, Jay? So that's Tan. Let's see what room Tan's about. Uh, yeah, the walls and the ceiling of the eastern portion uh, of this bare stone room have collapsed. To the west and the south are open amber doors. In the center of the room is a ten-foot-tall statue of a jackal-headed warrior made of cracked amber. It turns to face you, and it clenches its fists. Uh... So, let's find... Is this an amber golem? <laughs> yeah, he is. Well, this is fun. We'll use this one right here. I've been watching too many kids' cartoons, guys. Is that such a thing? <laughs> well, when um, Jay started describing the amulet, I started thinking about uh, Big Hero 6, where Fred's going on. Did Was Fred the one that made his own theme song? Yeah, where he's creating his own theme song, and it's got a green gem in the middle, and it's probably yeah. an emerald, and he gets right and he holds your hand. It's, <laughs> I remember that one. I like that one. Yep. Yeah, so as you come down... As soon as, like, the jackal kind of turns, um, Villainous is like, uh, yeah, you guys, uh, just call me if you need me, and he just backs away. Uh, at this point, uh... Lucian, what do you want to do? Um... Well, this is probably the thing that cracked the marble stone out in the hallway. Uh, which means that if we leave this room, it's probably still going to keep moving. 
Um, do we want to fight it, guys? Uh, at this point, uh, the decision's been made for you. It's going to make a stop attack. Let me get some papers so I can take initiative. Um, Hagrid and Tony, if you guys want to like move your tokens, I know you're coming with us. If you want to bring them in here so that we can fight this thing. <sighs> All right, so that's done. All right, 25 to 20. I haven't rolled yet. I'm doing laundry. Oh, I got work today. Leave me alone. Okay, I'm nowhere near it, so. Lucian, what'd you get? Uh, I got an 11. And Laven? 15. Hagrid? And Tony. I got a 10. All right. So just based off of the uh, the narrative and the surprise round, Lucian, you're going to get one attack uh, at you. And, oh, shit. Uh, that is a 29 to hit. That'll definitely hit. Um, that will be 19 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And that will bring us to the top. We'll have Esmeralda starting us off. And she is going to... Force the golem to make a wisdom saving throw. Which the, uh, yeah. Which the golem saves on. So instead, she's going to make a uh, fire bolt. And that's a nat one. So that fails on all accounts. Uh, Leoven, you're up next. Okay. Um,. I am going to cast Hunter's Mark. Okay, you do so. And then whip out my flaming longsword and go get him. Your flaming longsword. Okay, go ahead and attack. Okay, that is a 21. Oh, that hits. And then eight. So four plus five is nine plus two, eleven. Nice. Ah, uh, wait, plus fire damage. Yep. One, one fire damage. Okay. And that was your first attack? Oh, yeah, because the Hunter's Mark doesn't count for that. Bonus. Uh, 16 to hit. Uh, 16. Let's find out. Unfortunately, no. Uh, okay. Just this is, You sit there and you found a, a chunky portion of the amber, and it just kind of like scrapes the sword along it. But doesn't do any sort of lasting impact. Right. <laughs> that brings us to Hagrid. Um, I guess I cast Sacred Flame. Cut. Okay. Twenty six. Twenty six will hit.
Well, I guess it's um, it's a deck saving throw. It's not a. Yeah. Oh, okay. What does a nat one do for you? <laughs> We're getting some Will Wheaton style dice right here. That's uh, six fire damage. Okay. And then I'll try to attack it with my sword. That's uh, 17. Uh, 17 does hit. Actually, no, it's uh, 19, but either way. Uh, that hits harder. <laughs> 10 slashing. All right. Uh, you get through, and just based off of how uh, hard the amber is, it doesn't do as much as you thought it would, but you do have a nice little, like, chunk comes through. Remind me, is your sword uh, magical? Uh, I was just going to ask if the uh, bless uh, aspect had anything to then add. It's magical, yes. Never mind. It did the full 10 points of damage. So do I get to add my radiant yes. modifier as well? Uh, for this one, yes. Additional 13 radiant damage. Dang. Uh, yeah, you're starting to take clear chunks off of this uh, golem right now. Is that uh, what was originally his like pauldrons? Um, you've cut clean off. That's it. <laughs> oh, um, I also forgot to add my divine strike. Okay. Sorry, a lot of it. That's okay. <laughs> It's morning, man. Another, <laughs> another two radiant. Okay. Hot damn. That's a... Uh, if golems could speak, they'd probably say this smarts. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, that brings us... Anything else you want to do this turn, Hagrid? No, that's it. Who up? All right. Um, I am going to uh, skirt around the golem uh, this way. To get behind it, with uh, on the uh, on the opposite side from Leavin, I'm gonna kind of uh, as I'm running, sort of like uh, drag the tip of Bao and then swing in like an upward, like an uppercut kind of strike uh, okay. against the uh, the golem. Uh, roll with advantage and uh, go for it. Okay. All right, that is a 25 to hit. I think I have a plus 10, right? Yes, 25 to hit. Yeah, go ahead and hit. All right. Um, so. You, you will get sneak attack on this. Yeah, I need to grab enough D6s for that. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, so that's um, 25 damage. 25 damage. Okay. At this point, um, with you just being able to slash right through the back, uh, your sword cuts to the amber like butter. butter. Uh, and inside there, you begin to see this like glowing orb uh, exposed in the back of the uh, uh, golem. Okay. Uh, at that point, Tony, you're up. Uh, I'm not done yet. No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so using the momentum from that strike, I'm going to um, hop back and uh, seeing that glowing orb, I'm going to shoot at it with my uh, Eldritch Blast. Okay. As you do that, though, he will get an attack of opportunity. So this will happen uh, at the same time. Okay. Uh, how does a 14 sound? That misses. Okay. Go ahead and make your Eldritch Blast. All right. Um... That's not so bueno. The, that's a 12. A uh, 12 will not hit. So um, you're aiming for that little like glowing orb, and he turns around, realizes you're there, you send the Eldritch Blast in, and his hand just pushes it out of the way uh, to no effect. 
right. Uh, now it's Tony's turn. Uh, Tony, based off of where you are right now, you can see this glowing orb uh, just exposed in the back of the golem. Okay. Um, I'd like to shoot two ray of frosts at it. One is an action, one is a bonus. I'll let you shoot one ray of frost at it. I think we need to change the house rule to that you can't cast the same spell twice in a turn. Okie dokie works for me. Then I'll do okay. one. Well, then I gotta reformulate my plan. Take your time. Damn them. Well, don't truly take your time. Figure it out, but figure it out. Mm. Oh, screw it. I guess I'll take a shot with my thunder cannon and then a ray of frost. All right, go ahead and roll Using the hit. Thundermonger. Okay, roll the hit. Oh, crap. That was a total of 24. That'll hit. All right. That means I'm going to do 2d6 plus an extra 2d6. Uh, I did a total of 20 damage. Uh, 20 right on there. Okay. And uh, as you hit there, you realize, like, you see it just seize up in pain uh, on there. And, uh, sorry, I just got to read the comment from Lucian as well. So, uh, yeah, you see it as it seized up in the paint, and it like it starts like kind of spazzing around a little bit. You realize that hitting there is almost like hitting an eye in Resident Evil, and it does ridiculous amounts of damage. Okie dokie. Yep. As this thing looks like it is uh, about to just fall apart well, then, as much as it are. <laughs> uh, for a bonus, I'll fire a ray of frost at it. Sounds good. That is... Uh, 22. Uh, 22 will hit. And that is 1d8. Yep. Uh, no, it's based off your character level. It's 2d8. Okay. I can do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's 8 from the dice, and spells don't get a bonus, do they? No. no. Nope, so total 8. However, uh, that was just enough to take it out. Because um, holy bless weapon, everybody. <laughs> uh, but as this happens, is Tony just takes it like his uh, like little sawed-off shotgun looking gun, um, like blasts right into the back, and with his left hand, he just comes up and, and begins this ray of frost, starting at the feet. It just comes all the way up until the goal is now just one giant frozen stalagmite. I make art. <laughs> uh, so let me see if there's a frozen thing on here. Here you go. This is as close as we can get. <laughs> uh, at this point, uh, Tony, in your mind, uh, just based on the fact that you reference kids' movies, you kind of get the idea of uh, uh, someone singing Let It Go in your head. <laughs> I'd sing, but I'm a horrible singer. <laughs> Thank you. I just start humming it. No. Uh, I want to. I want to hit it really hard with the hilt of my scimitar. Try to try to break it. Roll the hit. <laughs> uh, seventeen. Uh, yeah. Some ice comes out, and oddly enough, it is like uh, perfect for uh, putting it into mixed drinks. <laughs> If only you had some. <laughs> Guys, we just made whiskey stones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whiskey. Uh, uh, Vilnius uh, comes back in. It's like, uh, guys, is it over? Oh. Ah, guess... Milkmaid's back. <laughs> Venereal disease is back? I prefer you call me by my name. Yeah, your name's Milk Drinker, right? I don't understand that reference. <laughs> um, Alright, is there uh, anything else in this room now? 
like any, anything of note, or is it just a, a golem uh, hidey hole? Other than a uh, frozen jackal? The jackal. Jackal. Uh, you've got Dora. Hold on one second. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a room I totally forgot to draw. It's right there. There's a door to the west, like right here. And it like overhangs the uh, main hall? Yeah, it totally does. Do well, how long has that door been there? Uh, the entire time. It's just like I forgot to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like I painted you guys in the quarter by accident. Sorry. This <laughs> is what happens when I do things without paying full attention to it. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's let's check out that uh, that door and the subsequent room that's behind it. Okay. Uh, as you open up the door, you see this uh, black marble balcony, 30 feet above the floor, overhangs the northeast corner of the temple. The two amber doors leading from this balcony stand open to the north. Uh, Zane, fist bump. You can sit there and see the uh, And One statue. La, 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 la. Yes, the And One statue, once again with its orb of darkness. La, 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 la. Uh, la, 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 la. Go get fist bumps from mommy. Thank you. Ba -la 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 -la. At this point, Tony, if you decide to go out on that balcony, make an arcana check. I did go out on the balcony and make a 24 for a archon check. All right, let me just finish up this whisper and I'm right back to you. I didn't realize I turned my mic off. All of the secrets. Okay. Uh, Check your uh, uh, chat log, and I'll let you know what you found. Hmm. Interesting. So, from this perspective, gentlemen, seems like that orb only shows up when somebody casts a spell in a recent amount of time. So, somebody's here keeping that orb going. So, uh, so it sounds like uh, Milk Drinker, your uh, amulet, doesn't really have much to do with that. Well, I haven't done anything with the amulet. But let me at least point it at the thing as he takes it. He doesn't take it away from his neck, but he points it at it. And he just goes, come on, do something. And you just see him begin to clench all the muscles in his body. Everything here is absolutely pointless. You guys were right. It didn't have anything to do with it, but he's convinced that it will. Um, try shaking it. Vigorously. Are you sure it's not too scary for you to stand that, that close to it? I mean, I'm trying to get over my fears one at a time. I just don't want to do it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we're gonna take a quick break, guys. I need to use the bathroom. <laughs> okay. I think he needs to violently shake it towards the statue.
Man, I think that uh, we gave that blessing to the uh, to the right right person. Since Hagrid's got the weapon damage and then the radiant damage and then his other radiant damage and the other radiant damage. <laughs> I'm going to agree. How much damage did you do on your turn, Dad? All right, guys, I'm back. My morning coffee just uh, finished the job. <laughs> All right, so uh, Tony had just figured out that the orb of uh, that was in the hands of the giant statue here appears to be um, something that is of a more recently cast spell. And I shared said information with the group. Oh, yep. Nice. And then uh, uh, Valinus tried to use his amulet and it didn't do anything. For the record, this uh, am the amulet looks like it belongs to a uh, Flavor Flav style hip hop artist with the way that the chains and the gilding worked. So it's pretty ostentatious. Oh, it's just like everything else in this building. <laughs> he needs to try harder if he doesn't burst a blood vessel he didn't try hard enough wouldn't that hurt it's called maximum effort <laughs> yeah wouldn't that hurt is there uh, a door uh, like to the north of Lave in there there is not a door there but there is a door right here to that room oh, okay. also just knock the wall down Oh, but that might make a lot of noise, and then more scary things come in here. <laughs> Just saying. I haven't been scared yet. Well, you're also a little bit demented if you don't mind me insulting you a little bit. Yeah, that's a compliment. What are you talking about? I, uh, I don't get you. <laughs> All right, so uh, as we get up into 12... Uh, this bare stone room consists of a foyer to the west uh, and a shrine to the east. Four candlesticks lie on dusty floor, on the dusty floor of the foyer. In the shrine, fragments of a shattered obsidian statue are scattered in a raised alcove at the eastern end of the chamber. Two pairs of empty alcoves line the north and south walls of the shrine. Uh, as you sit there and try to mentally piece together some of the... Uh, um, the uh, fragments of these statues, you get to believe that it is the god of and one uh, <laughs> all assembled and everything here looks like it has the rough size and impact that it once got punched by the jackal golem. So the golem destroyed the uh, shrine? Based off of what you know about the programming of the golem is someone might have been chased into this room and then the golem punched him, and it just so happened that the and one god statuettes were behind the person that got punched. Behind said punched person. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, and in reality, the god's name isn't the god of and one, but I like it better that way. <laughs> um, is there any way we can tell who, what that god's name is? Like, might Hagrid know that? 
based off the fact that you guys are kind of uh, transplants into this plane, I would sit there and argue it's very, very difficult to know. However, there is one person here you have not asked yet. Esmeralda. No. <laughs> Milk drinker. Who, who's, who's the bald guy statue? Once again, I prefer that you call me by my name. But I prefer you stand and fight. <laughs> I can't hear what you're saying when you're both talking to me. Tony, lay your insult down first. Uh, I, I was just—he said by his proper name, venereal disease. Oh, you guys are really beginning to hurt my feelings. You hurt me when you ran away in that battle, and that you didn't give maximum effort. Okay, so you all had a question for me. Yeah. Uh, this this um, well, the big forty foot tall statue. Who who does that depict? What god oh. is that? Oh, that's that's the god of secrets. Um, no one really knows his name because, once again, what good is a god of secrets if you knew his name? The god of secrets has a secret. Secret. <laughs> secret. Secret. Uh, god of secrets. All right. Hold up. There's more to it. I'm just making sure that I don't give away too little or too much. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, because here's the thing about the Amber Temple here is something that was too dangerous to the real world, they threw here, and then they beseeched the God of Secrets to say, hey, dude, why don't you keep this a secret because it's too scary for me in real life. And let me tell you something. They're right. kind of wish I never came here. Stupid Jacarian. What uh, what brought you guys here? Jacarian was like, oh, hey, there's all this cool magic shit here. And then we can be ultimately powerful. And then we can go ahead and tell Stroud to fuck off. And then I was okay. And then we found some spells. And I tried casting. It's dead. Wow. I'm the Bunny. Bunny. Mike, can you mute your mic? What was the end of that, Jay? Then we found some spells here. And then Jakari was like, go ahead and cast one. And I did. And now he's dead. And I look like this. <laughs> um, what was the name of the spell you cast? I don't know. I, I kind of was skimming it as I was casting it. You human wizards. I, I'm not what Jacarian would have called his star pupil. <laughs> I would think not. <laughs> well, he only made that mistake once. <laughs> uh, just off of the uh, wisdom save on that, he hurt his own feelings. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to my um, All right, are there uh, doors in this room? Uh, allow me to check the map here. There is uh, double doors that go into this room here. Uh, is there is there anything along this wall? Make an investigation check. Yeah. What natural twenty? So that's a twenty-seven. It is a secret door right where you checked. It's kind of like. Um, there's like a bookshelf there, <laughs> a bunch of books, and as you quickly look there, you see one that just does not belong. Like all the rest are like arcane history books, and the other one just sits there and sit like it's a penthouse book, is what it sounds like. And you just sit there and you pull it out, and the Linus thinks that you're trying to look at smut, and you realize that's the trigger for the door, and it just turns open, and you see um, a stairway. Man. We yeah. gotta talk to mommy. There. A stairwell? Yeah. All right, cool. Because he was about to sit there and sit, like, he, he was halfway through and said, this is a good time to look. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but before I pull the book, I want to say, <laughs> just shut up and watch, kid. And then I pull the book. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you being a good girl? 
I don't think it's too useful here. What was that? I don't think my input is too useful here. <laughs> um, what's uh, what's down the stairs? Uh, that's fourteen. What, pray, pray? What milk? Hey, Mike, can you mute Mike for a sec? Uh, a dusty corridor heads north and then bends to the east, descending down a dark staircase. The air is thin, but with a heavy stench of death. Gross. Mm-hmm. Hey, um, before we go down onto that level, do we want to see what that orb does? If there's any way we can, you know, counter it with a spell? Uh, I don't know. Did you rip counter spell out of your spell book? Uh, let me check as he begins to open his book. <laughs> he says, no, no, no. Ah, here's one. It's known as the spell of countering. Um, however, I have to see it being casted, so I don't think that helps. Oh, here's one. It's called Magical Dispelment. Um, let me see if this works. As uh, he comes up, he sits there, charges up the spell, and it fizzles out the first couple of times. Like, oh, that word should be there. And then it works as he throws it in, and uh, uh, you see that the the orb is beginning to get smaller and smaller and smaller until you eventually see like a, uh, a humanoid-looking creature, kind of, um, before the spell is completely uh, uh, disappe disappears. Wait, so there's a humanoid creature inside the orb? Yeah, it looks like a... Um, it's it's like a humanoid size bipedal red fox. Uh, it's wearing like purple robes. It has like John Lennon style glasses, but one lens is red and one lens is blue. Uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And at that point, uh, Lennon goes, "Oh God, there's something in there." Um, is there like signs of life from whatever was in there? Uh, yes. And uh, this this creature just comes up. He stands up, and through his John Lennon style glasses, he goes, "Who disrupts Nephron?" Nephron. That was venereal disease here. As I point at the little wizard fucker from the other room. Okay. Uh, why were you in an orb? Hold on one second, I'm getting a token for him. Oh, okay. All right, since I can't find Fox Person, we'll do literal Fox. <laughs> and he sits up as he jumps over uh, there in just one giant leap. And he uh, has a wand. He pulls it up. And he just sits there and says, uh, excuse me. I'll be the one asking the questions right now. Who sat there and undid that orb? Uh, it was this guy, as he points to Lucian. <laughs> Holy shit, he can lie. Uh, at this point, uh, Nephiron points to you and he goes like, I'll have to thank you for that. I was stuck in that orb uh, for a long time. And uh, it was great to actually breathe air I hadn't already previously breathed in before. The, it was getting kind of thin. I, uh, I I step I I, re I release my hand from the hilt of uh, Bao and I step forward and I, I with my hand extended to to shake uh, Neferon's hand and like um, you know, you're, you're welcome. 
he he's got the wand in his right hand, so he takes his left and he does like the inverse one. It's like really weird. <laughs> Like it feels like you're shaking hands with a rakshasa, but it's clearly not one. <laughs> and he's just like, "Sorry, I'm a little defensive. Uh, almost dying due to asphyxiation tends to do that." So, uh, Nephron, why were you trapped in an orb, dying? Um, you see, down on the bottom floor, there's a, a lich. And I kind of upset him. And there's a couple of things he did. Um, one was wipe my mind, so I'm not sure why I was down there. Um, and the second one is he put me in this orb. I was like, hey, um, why don't you take a breather? And I sat there and said, this seems like a really bad pun. And he goes, I know, I just can't think of any more in the moment. And then I started slowly dying by asphyxiation. And then you guys came. <laughs> but if you want inf more information that, I literally do not know. So you don't know, like, where you came from or anything like that? I don't know why I have these glasses on right now. I don't know, but they look pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um... Maybe uh, I look. I look at uh, Valinus, and I look at Tony. I go, maybe, maybe Tony could uh, figure out if those glasses are anything special. Uh, maybe there's some sort of magic to them. Yeah, uh, Tony. Without even a roll, you'll know that uh, the robe that he's wearing is a uh, robe of useful items. I have one of those. All right. Nice. <laughs> hey, off little ones. But I'd like to make an arcana check on his glasses. Go for it. Uh, that is a 21. No. Uh, yes, they are magical, and it looks like it can uh, alter vision. Uh, it, yeah, it looks like um, you, you're not aware of the actual magic without seeing through them. But you get the idea that uh, it can improve uh, your ability to see things hmm. in, in ways that normal glasses would not. Um, <laughs> magically enhancing sight and robe of useful items. So he's got some pretty badass vision and a pretty sick ass robe. Sick ass. Um... Are, are we sure we trust this guy? I mean, he's a fox wearing a robe, and he looks like he, he does a lot of drugs. And you're a burnt wiener. What's your point? He, he looks like he's better at things than I am. At least you know that no matter what, I can't get in your way that what that hard. Um, you always need a meat shield. You're coming with venereal. Oh, God damn it. Can I, hey, can I, can I insight check uh, Neferon? To see, uh -huh. like, if he really is telling the truth about having his memory wiped. Yeah, okay. Alright. That is gonna be... I don't know the last time I rolled insight. Okay, so that is a adjusted 20. I'm gonna put something in your chat log. Ooh, whispers. Secret, secret. I got a secret. It's super fitting since, you know, we're... 20 feet away from the statue of the god of secrets. Why can't I actually write a whisper right now? Is it W slash? Yeah. God damn it. Wait, no, I think it's slash W. There we go. exciting so 
So in other news, I uh, partially ate a moldy muffin today. <laughs> Did you fail your constitution saving throw? So far, no. Okay. All right. Um do you uh do you remember where this lich is? No. I'm sorry, wrong voice. No. <laughs> <laughs> um all right. Well, I'm having second thoughts now about the uh, damp, dark hallways reeking of, of death and rot. Um, it's probably from a lich. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I just I put two and two together. I want to make sure everybody else did too. Very good. I would love you to study the art of shutting up now. Um, How does one do that? <laughs> Not like that. Oh, okay, I'll try something else then. At this point, he begins like... Uh, like doing the whole uh, like he has two fingers like up on his left hand, one on his right hand. He just slaps them together, and then both fingers go to his right hand, and he just <laughs> one at one. It's actually more useful. All right. Um, uh, from actually from where we're at up here. Uh, DM, can we see? Uh, is there like a doorway behind the statue or anything? Like any any way out of this main chamber that isn't where we're at? Um, I have to look down on the bottom floor for that one. Because the oh, last time we took a good look at this room, it was from the front door. Yeah, there is. Is um, you can see on the other side of the statue on the bottom floor, about thirty feet down on there. There's a, a nice big opening, and uh, you can sit there and just guessing based off of symmetry is if there was, because everything else in the room seems symmetric, that there's probably one underneath you as well. Huh. Uh, is there another, um, like, balcony over on this side? There is. There looks like there used to be, but it got knocked down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Uh, as you look on the lower level, there does appear to be a door underneath the balcony there as well. And then openings there and there on the bottom floor. Okay. Um, let's see. There was another door in... Uh, in this room, right, guys? There was, like, one along the this wall here? Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's to 13. Go check that out again. Uh, yeah, I'll let you know exactly what's in there right now, because it's largely inconsequential. Uh, this is, like, where an archer would stand if it's trying... Uh, like, if it's trying to uh, sit there and fire, like, there's an arrow slit that peers into the balcony and into the, the like main room here. And there's like a uh, just random moldy, like petrified arrows uh, all throughout here. So you, as best as you can tell, because you have a ranger in here, it's where someone stands and fires arrows in case of a siege. Houston, there's some mold in here if you want to give it a try. <laughs> I'm set. Okay. <laughs> I think I've eaten my quotient for the day. Uh, were there any slits that like overlook this hallway here? Uh, no, it's meant more for protecting uh, the main room is to keep individuals from going north. Hmm. From what we can see so far, is there an access point to this area? No. Okay. Well, I believe our only option right now is to uh, descend down to the bottom floor 
and see if we can, uh, well, find something that's uh, worth my time and to get my memory back. Uh, I don't, I don't like that idea. I think uh, we need to go find that uh, Jacarian stuff so I can GTFO. You know, uh, Valinus, I'm sure that the Lich has it. What makes you believe that? Because it's what you want. <laughs> and I'm sure that if it's powerful enough for you to need it to join another uh, wizarding guild or whatever, then it's probably powerful enough to draw the attention of the Lich. Oh, god damn, I never thought of that. The Lich is going to be the new ruler of Jacarian's just wizards. I don't know if I want to be a wizard anymore, guys. Well, you should have thought about that before you Can I give his head slap him, or at least attempt to? <laughs> uh, you're going to need one hell of a vertical on that, so it's, uh, let's make a uh, acrobatics check first. Let's see what I can do. Um, turns out I forget how my feet work, I think. I rolled uh, one did. with a plus two. She just slapped his ass. Yeah. <laughs> that a boy, you're optimistic. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, hey, I didn't consent to that. No means yes, and yes means yes. And it's not rape if you yell surprise. That's so, uh... Keep me backwards. Nephron, can we, uh... Can we count on you to, to help us out? I see no other way to get my memory back. So, uh, I might not be the best guy, but I'll, I'll help any way that I can on one condition. Uh, this little uh, wuss here uh, does not follow us. Look, I don't need my memory to know I would never hook up with something like that. <laughs> um, well, I guess I have a I have an important follow up question for you then. Um, if we get into a f into a fight, can we count on you to stand by our side? Who are you asking? Nephron. Nephron. Yeah. Because I already know the answer from Valinus. <laughs> you meat shield, man. He can't, he can't even be a meat shield. He dips out at the first sight of danger. I got some rope. We could tie him up and just push him into things. That sounds more complicated than maybe recruiting someone who can actually do some fighting. I thought you guys weren't barbarians. You're right. We uh, know how to do knots. Uh, at this point, he just goes, yeah, absolutely. Inside check. <laughs> Uh, you don't need to. He, he seems... Okay. Just... Um, so, you look you look kind of wizardy. Like, what, what can you do? Like, without without your memory, are you still able to cast any spells? I can still cast enough spells to get us into or out of trouble. That's a good answer. I like this guy. Um... What do you guys think of uh, dismissing Valinus to go back to his uh, his chambers and oh, uh, say yes? Leave me alone. Since since he's not really very useful to us anymore, that is. Just let me live, okay? We're not gonna kill you. We could just push him over the you know balcony railing here down to the witch man. I'd like to see you try that, Tony. <laughs> um, Tony, I'm in. What did you say, Jay? Tony, what's your alignment? Unfriendly. I'm chaotic <laughs> neutral. You're getting really, really close to CE right now. Ooh, fun stuff. Okay. Um. All right, yeah, Valinus, go, go away. Uh, you don't have to tell me twice. We did though. <laughs> oh, that's one NPC way. 
you guys would like so much more if I voiced him like Bumat Soul. <laughs> um. All right. Is there anything along this side that we haven't really investigated yet? Uh, to answer that question for you, no. No. Okay. And we can't really investigate the other side because we barred that door. Correct. Um. All right, guys. So now, now we have another option. We can travel down the hidden staircase. Um. Or we can double back and head down through the main chamber into one of the uh, archways, the openings that at the bottom. Here, here are my thoughts on that. Uh, if this is a building that is protected by the God of Secrets, it probably would be in our best interest to go towards the most secretive place. Use the secrets. Yeah, the only way for us to get something is to play the power of the secret. Play the power of the secret. Don't don't put more meaningless words. <laughs> this is common sense. That's it. No, I just I liked it. <laughs> oh my god, you're gonna get that tattooed on your lower back, aren't you? I'm gonna tattoo it on yours, and I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna just explode it all over your backside. Um. All right. Uh. I would like to. Uh. Very. Uh, and sort of lead the charge. Like, I, I, obviously, we all want to stick together, especially now that we know there's a lich here. Yep. Uh, let's get everybody right next to each other so I can pop you down to the next map. Because now we're playing liches and dragons. Or dungeons and liches, depending on how you look at it. Make sure that those come across. There we go, it did. Perfect. At this point you recognize that there is a like another version of you. It's like looking in a mirror. Wow. <laughs> oh. And that's totally not the map. I mean it's a map. It, it certainly is a map, but it doesn't mean anything to you. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> so instead, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to draw it right here. Oh boy. So you end up getting So this is going to look a lot like the room in Argina Vostal. Sorry about that. Six. Cool. This is all one continuous room right here that you guys are in. And then there's the stairwell coming out on that end. So let's just move the group right there. So that, uh, <clears throat> that puts us into... Uh, you, as you are about to enter this room, you see that there is uh, the door itself is locked. Um, yes, uh, the door is locked. As you go to check to see uh, if you can pick the lock, um, you realize that it's like magically shut. Does anybody know? <clears throat> a spell to open doors. Um, it might be called something rather obvious, like knock. No, I do not. Or open door. <laughs> uh, it's a negative ghost rider. I have a hammer. Yes, you do. You did buy a hammer. <laughs> really nice hammer. <laughs> okay, John Mulaney. <laughs> uh, Neferon, do you do you know anything to help us out here? 
Um, according to my spell book, it doesn't appear so. Um, I I can, however, uh, dimension door past it, but there's a chance I might really hurt myself in the process. Right. So what's the downside? <laughs> You guys are kind of assholes, aren't you? Only jokingly for me. I won't speak for Tony. <laughs> I think he does a bad enough job at that himself. Speaking for himself? Yes. Um, so if you guys haven't noticed, common isn't my first language. What is your first language? Fox common. Fox common. <laughs> I think I speak that. <laughs> yeah, what's common for elf? Elf common. <laughs> um, for dragons, dragon common. Dragomen. Um. So, uh, Jay, am I understanding correctly that really we cannot proceed any further at this point because we can't get around this door? Oh no, there's still ways around the door. Oh. How sturdy is the lock? I mean, the lock itself is sturdy. The door itself does not appear to be as sturdy. Is it like a wooden what door? I, can we get to the hinges? I mean, it, it looks like a thin amber door. And yes, you can get to the hinges. Like, it's, like this, this door looks like it's more designed to be ostentatious and relying on magic for its strength than actually being a good door. What if I just try to pry off the hinges? Yeah, what if we use uh, like Tony's crowbar and, and Levin's hammer? <laughs> yes, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll make this a uh, two-person team strength check. Um, and you can add your proficiency modifiers to it because you're using tools to help out. Hey, 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 I got a better Ooh. plan. I still nope, got a I'm already doing ram this. in the bag of holding. A better ram is not a better this. plan. <laughs> Uh, two, 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 two. 18, 19, So actually, I'll change it up. Yeah, we'll have one person be the strength check, and that's the person using the hammer, and we'll have one person be the dexterity check, and that's the person holding the crowbar in place. I already rolled a 23, and I got the hammer, so. Okay. Uh, Tony, can I use your crowbar? Have at it. I've just right. kind of been holding it out, waiting. <laughs> All right, that is a. You said a dexterity check? Yes. Uh, 14. All right, that's enough to uh, uh, quickly get all three of the um, hinges uh, freed from the door as it just falls over. And uh, I'm going to roll a luck uh, check for you guys. Oh my god, dude. I would need to take a picture of uh, this one because it just barely worked out in your favor. Um, the door itself, uh, at the last second, um, Leovin recognizes to not have it like fall on top of him as he pushes the door the other way and it falls flat down and you hear this mat like arcane come up and uh, Tony, based off of all the damages if you've taken in your life before, uh, and Hagrid can verify this as well after being bit by a vampire and having the life sucked out of him, that there was a the door was trapped and the door itself protected you from the spell as soon as the door opened. Hmm. How much does this door weigh? I owe it a life debt. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? He wants to shove the door in the bag of holding. I don't think that's going to work. Uh, given the size of the door, I don't think he can fit it inside the bag. What if I chop it into smaller pieces? Then you just have amber in the bag. Yeah, why are you? How much that? is amber worth? Not that much. Yeah, it's not. Uh, I don't know. What's it like? If you're trying to create Jurassic Park, probably slightly more. Ooh. <laughs> I just got told yeah. I can make Jurassic Park in this game. Are there are there mosquitoes are there trapped eggs? in the amber? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah mosquitoes. That's what it was. <laughs> Mike, roll a d20. And let me tell you, after roll high, we're going to kill your character. <laughs> <laughs> um, kidding, I'm kidding. Let's see here, what do I get? How about a 14? 
Plus <laughs> <the> urgency <laughs> makes it an 18. You're still dead. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> The, the thing about adding your proficiency is I don't think you're not proficient in pissing off the DM. <laughs> Long story um, short, Tony will be an undead in uh, Tomb of Annihilation. He will return. Yeah. Um, so uh, what's what's on the other side of this doorway now? <laughs> a listener said Twitter goes like, yeah, um, here's the thing, DM. I don't think you lose your shit every time that Tony has an idea. And goes like, oh, no, I do. <laughs> Helps that none of us take it seriously, so. <laughs> I'm trying not to die. Speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to die someday. Yeah, but I hope that day is after I run the, I'm running Akre. Anyway, um, what's on the other side of the doorway now that it's open? All right. Yeah. Room has walls of glazed amber. Surprise, surprise. A floor <laughs> of red marble. Surprise, surprise. And a rough hewn shaft in the center of its ten foot high ceiling. There are three amber sarcophagi that stand in alcoves, and above each sarcophagus floats a human skull wreathed in green flame. Uh oh. And let's have roll initiative. Those ones are alive, guys. Did you say we're rolling initiative? Yep. Alright. Here we go, boys. All right, I got a natural twenty for my initiative. I got an unnatural twenty. So twenty-four for me. So that is forty. <sighs> oh, sorry. Okay, and uh, so going twenty-five to twenty. Twenty-four. Twenty-one. 20. Wow, three of us in the 25 to 20 bracket. That's badass. <laughs> Ready to go. Liam, what'd you get? 20 even. Okay. And then, Tony, what'd you get? Nine. And then that brings up Esmeralda in the back. And, and uh, let's go with Neferon. Neferon has a 18. All right, uh, that begins with Lucian. Um, okay, where are these things? <laughs> uh, when I pop them up, because, yeah, reasons. I was like, oh, I won't put all the tokens in the map because then everybody can see them. And I was like, oh, wait. I really wish that uh, if I knew better, what I would have done is uh, have Nicholas Cage uh, tokens in here already. <laughs> For, each one would be like a different Nick Cage movie. All right, there we go. Um. All right. Uh. Shit. I also, would like to so rage. <laughs> dink. Uh, as a bonus action, you get really angry. <laughs> um, no, no, as a as a, as a bonus action, I'd like to cast uh, Eldritch Blast at uh, this one. Okay. Um, that is a twenty-five. Oh, it hits so hard. Okay. I think I have two bolts for that, right? Yes. Let's D10 and a D10. All right. That's uh, 10 damage. Okay. Uh, and then uh, for my action, I would like to take, take the dodge action. <laughs> okay. Uh, that brings us to Hagrid. <clears throat> All right, uh, I guess for my bonus action, I'll cast Sacred Flame against that same one that Lucian just hit. Sounds good. It's a deck saving throw. Deck saving throw. 
Let's see what that turns out to be. Uh, 13 plus... Sixteen. Uh, I guess that's a uh, save because that's what my DC is. Yep. So does the spell do, still do damage? Like, does it do half damage on a save? Nope, it's an uh, all-or-nothing spell. Yeah. Oh. So there's your bonus action. I guess I'll move in then and uh, I might try to hit that one to the south, I suppose. Yeah, you can easily get over there. That's uh, just a 25. <clears throat> that will hit. Uh, almost like uh, Hank Aaron hitting a home run, except. The bat's a sword, and the ball's a skull. <laughs> and I want to use my uh, divine strike also on this. Okay. And that's uh, 12 slashing. And it's damage as well, if you haven't already. 2 radiant. Okay. And... Uh, is this uh, thing considered undead or? Uh, because it's created through necromancy, yes. All right, so I get to use my uh, blessed sword yep. bonus as well. And that will add 14 radiant damage. Yeah, so um, this, this flaming skull, uh, while floating, was coming right down uh, at you, and you sit there and you grip up on your sword and you keep your hands in and you swing uh, your sword at it and not only do you slice the skull in half, but it go the two halves go flying. And if it wasn't for the fact you're in an enclosed room, the skull probably would have flown close to 400 feet, uh, giving you your first uh, flaming skull home run of the season, but instead it just shatters into a thousand pieces. <laughs> nice. Uh, so write down in your uh, additional notes home runs for the season as one. <laughs> and uh, this guy is uh, shattered in pieces and gets a brown axe over him. Yeah, brown axe. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? No, that's it. All right, Laven. All right, I'm going to Hunter's Mark the dude at the end of the hall. Okay. And then... Go get him. Wait, how far is that? Yeah, I can go do that. And a flaming long sword. Okay. Uh, 11 to hit? Uh, 11 does not hit. As you pass through with the flaming long sword on this, um, you, you hit the fire on the flaming skull. And... Uh, your common sense tells you maybe adding fire to fire just creates more fire. That's not a bad thing for it. It seems like a good idea at the time. Yes. <laughs> How long can I switch weapons, or did I already use my bonus action? No, you can you can use your switch weapons. That's typically a free action. Uh, go back to the rapier. Okay. Uh, 14 to hit? Uh, 14. Let me make oh sure God. I have this right. A 14 will hit. Okay, and that's... Uh, 10. Uh, 11 piercing and 4... F Wait, I don't do that. 11 piercing. No, you have Hunter's Mark on it. Yeah, that was with the Hunter's Mark. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's that brings us to uh, our boy Fox Body. He's going to come up, and I need to look at his spells again.
And he is going to uh, he's going to hold his action for right now. Uh, at this point, the flame skulls come up, the two that are alive, and um, we're going to have a magic missile at Leaven. And that will automatically hit. And let's see here. And all three are going to come at you. Oh, God, that's awful. That is um, 8, 11, 12, 13, 14 force damage. You said it was three things? Yep, three does, bolts. Does my multi. Oh, wait, they're automatic hits, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 14. Yep. However, because you cast a ranged spell in melee, you are allowed to make another attack, but we'll get to that in just a second. Okay. So the other one is coming down and is uh, prepared. Like, it looks like there's about to be a giant um, explosion of flame coming from the center of this flaming skull as he comes in. But Nephron, who had the idea... Uh, is going to try to cast counter spell and does just enough to prevent the fire, like to contain the fire, so nothing happens. Uh, that brings us to Tony. Uh, attack of opportunity for good. Roll an attack of opportunity on the uh, uh, skull. Wait, what? Wait. Yeah, yeah, because they're because uh, mm -hmm. the school was and tried to put a uh, ranged spell attack um, on Laven. I'm granting him an attack of opportunity. Ah. Twenty six. Oh, that hits so hard. Uh, clothes don't go up there. That's for toys. Seven, eight, ten, eleven. Another eleven damage. Okay, uh, you you sat there and deftly rapiered him in both eye sockets. And if he had eyes, dude, he'd be blind now. But no, he's still Nick Cajun really hard. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, what Nick Cage reference do I want to make? Uh, you, you'll get the idea that this skull might be gone in sixty seconds. But, um... <laughs> Yeah. Awful. Awful. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you have to take the inspiration. Uh, uh, that brings us to Tony. All right. Um, yeah. I'll take a step forward and I will shoot at Skull by Fox Body with Thunder Cannon. All right. Fuck it. I'll use Thunder, thunder Monger while I'm at it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to hit with a total of six. Uh, yeah, you. it turns out if you don't point the gun at what you want to shoot, it's just ends up in the ceiling. And there's just a little bit of, like, amber chunks that come down and fall on top of your head. All right. This then... you did, but you are more embarrassed than you usually are, which is to say not a lot. Then I would like to fire my rays of frost at him. Okay. We'll try that. That is a 14. Uh, 14 just barely hits. Ooh. You said it was Fox Body? Yeah, the one by Fox Body. Cool. That is 9 damage. That is bumped up because I say so. That looked super effective. Tony used Ray of Frost. It was super effective. And I love you, you try to sit there and do the same thing of freeze him into a stalagmite again, but it turns out, although it hurt the fire more, it didn't extinguish it, and then it quickly melts. But now you have some nice water. Ooh, we got fresh water, guys. Mm -hmm. Spent. Okay, that brings us to Esmeralda. Uh, Esmeralda's going to come in here, and she's going to make two attacks with her rapier. First one hits, second one hits. 
Uh, that will go. And that's enough to kill this guy here. Um, she, however, was not able to uh, uh, tie the home run record set in this battle. Uh, but this one, she ends up just finding a soft point in, like, uh, in between two of the fused bones and is able to separate it out. And just the flick of her wrist um, is able to get the um, spell that keeps the flaming skull uh, alive to extinguish. And it just falls down into two pieces. That brings us back to the top of the order. Lucian, go ahead. Um, all right. I'm going to... Uh, run over... Uh, to there. <laughs> yep. Um, and uh, make an attack against the flaming skull <laughs> with uh, with Bao. Um, that's a seventeen. Seventeen will hit. All right. I need to. All right. So that's twelve damage. Uh, okay. And that one is uh, enough for me to say, describe the skull's grisly demise. Um, I want to, like, stick B.A.O. into its flaming mouth and then slam it against the wall. <laughs> uh, yeah, as you do that, um, it, it shatters into pieces. Not as many as Hagrid shattered it into, but there's at least seven or eight different parts. Um, the, the mandible looks irreparable. Um, seems like someone's gonna gonna not have a uh, lower jaw. It's gonna be hard to, to chatter uh, now because it's broken AF. <laughs> but uh, that's the end of the battle. Uh, Hagrid, your agent would like to talk to you about getting a uh, contract extension. And uh, as we look in here, we have. Uh, three sarcophagi, one to the west, or one to the north. Hold on. That doesn't line up with the map. Ah, uh, yes, one to the north, one to the east, one to the south, because the entrance was on the west. Okay. Um, anybody up for checking the sarcophagi? Always. There might be goodies inside. Okay, just make sure that you, um, uh, Identify which one you're going to, north, east, or south. Uh, I guess I'm going to start in the north. Yeah. Yeah. And who is the one that is going to investigate? Um, I'll do it. Okay. Okay. As soon as you begin to put your hand on the sarcophagus, um, your consciousness uh, is sucked away from... From your body for a second. For the rest of the party, it doesn't look anything more than just like his eyes go milky white for a second. Um, at this point, um, you said the north one? Yeah. Okay. At that point, um, you get to see, like, you, you see what was encased in amber, and within this vestige, you see a. Uh, uh, individual wearing kind of like uh, a queen's crown on there. She sits there and says, um, oh god, there's a whole bunch of things that are supposed to help me out with this. I need to pull them up. I think that's the one. Yeah, long story short for these, um, it had, uh, they wrote out better things for the vestiges to actually tell the player, and I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that I had it right. Okay. Because it turns out that... Uh, It was way better, and here it is. Now I have to actually find it. Uh, X33. X gonna give it to you. 
going to give it to you. You're going to give it to you. X going to give it to you. Oh, are you kidding me? It's totally not there. All right. I wish my computer didn't reset because I could have given this a lot more fun. But uh, it, it, she just comes in and she goes uh, uh, and tells you a little bit of a story about how she got trapped into here because of her ability to create blights and diseases. And she offers you uh, the ability to use her power three times should you accept her gift. Uh, her name is Fekre, Queen of Poxes. Do I have to accept or decline right now? Yes. I decline. All right. At that point, she expresses her disappointment, and you rejoin the party. Oh, that was uh, weird, guys. Uh, I touched the sarcophagus, and like some some something like came to me and spoke to me and offered me a a gift, basically. But I turned it down. Well, what was it? Like the ability to like make diseases and stuff. I don't know. I don't really want to be like some plague rat. Here we go. So, um, found it. It's, she just says, my name is Fekre, Queen of Poxes. I bid you to accept my gift. It is one of great power. It will be known as the one who controls health and disease at your command. Your name will reek of power, is what she said. Wait, so you could, it was just making diseases? Yeah. But not like making healthy from diseased people? Like, could you heal people or could you just disease them maybe like control over like i could like create like cause disease or maybe cure disease mm. uh yeah lucian as you put your hand off of the sarcophagus uh you begin to uh just it smells a little bit more foul in there Gross. That's the point you want to wretch, but you're just sitting there it's like, man, I would love to not be in here much longer. <laughs> uh, does anyone else want to check out the other uh, sarcophagi? I don't, I don't really want to go through that again. It's weird. <clears throat> I'll check the one to the south. To the south. All right. As this happens, um, your eyes go milky white as your hand touches. You begin to uh, come in, and there's this uh, Odin from like Thor uh, movies looking guy. He goes, my name is Zrinhala, the howling storm. Do you think you can withstand the power, the true power of storms? Because that's what I can offer you. A name for yourself as a storm, at least while you can survive. Uh, at this point, uh, he... Like, once again, just like the last one, he's offering a gift, and it is your choice to accept or decline the gift. <clears throat> the power of storms as long as I can survive. Yes. Hmm. No, I think I'll decline also. That's unfortunate. As you come back and uh, as you uh, remove your hand from there, you can feel like a little static shock that comes. It doesn't like it doesn't cause any lasting damage, but it's a little bit inconvenient, and you just shake your hand a little bit, and it goes away a few seconds later. What uh, uh, this, what happened with that one, Hagrid? I 
was offered a gift, I declined it. Okay. Uh, at this point, Esmeralda is going to go towards the east one. Um, and she comes in. She puts her hand on. Her eyes go milky white. Within six seconds later, she removes off. And she turns around and she goes, um, I said yes. And at this point, you guys notice that her eyes have changed um, color. It, it's no longer like a dark brown. It's more of like a, a yellow, almost amber colored. God damn it. Everything here is amber colored. Um, yeah. And at this point, it's like, uh, yeah, they, they um, offered me a chance to uh, prevent people from dying. Uh, so I, I said, absolutely, anything that can help us keep our, our warriors against Strahd alive. So um, I hope it helps. All right. No. Sounds like vampirism to me. Uh, no, 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 no. I think this is uh, one that's people on the right side of undeath. Mm. Yep, but that's uh, all three of the um, sarcophagi. Okay. Uh, is there anything else down here? Um, like any, like, secret passageways? No. Nope, it looks like this itself was a secret passage. Okay. Uh, so as you guys, because there's really no other options, head back up. Uh, you're back up onto that top floor. And uh, you guys can uh, do what you need to do as we're back over here. All right. Um, well, do you guys want to go the, the bandity way? Um, and see if there's another like secret passage kind of thing over there, or do you want to uh, head down to like the main floor and uh, head through the uh, like archways at the back? Well, I think the the important thing here are the sarcophagi. They they look like they're um, things that are that are going to give us some additional powers here. Um, I'm beginning to get the idea, however, that. This is stuff that Strahd has relied upon in order to get the extra powers and bring back Rahadin. Hmm. So we, one of the best things I would ask is, um, one, are we strong enough to beat that lich? Uh, and two, can we investigate all these so we know all the bells and whistles that Strahd may have available to him when we fight him again? Uh, do we also want to consider, like, destroying these after we check them out? I don't know how we'd go about destroying them. Do you have any ideas? Well, I have this hammer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that that's going to do it. <laughs> No, no, I want to see this. Go ahead and try. <laughs> no? Okay, let's move on. Later. Let's, here's an idea. Let's take out the vampire first, and then we fight those. <laughs> okay. Speaking of which, do we really trust Vilnius to be around something this powerful for this long? I mean, would you I want to kill him? <laughs> I don't think he... Kill him, but get him out of this building and then seal it off. God, who do you think I am, Strahd? I mean, your eyes look all weird now. <laughs> what are you talking about? Your eyes are yellow. At, at this point, she uh, like takes some of the amber and then begins wiping it until it starts to be able to, to reflect it a little bit. Because 
I don't see anything weird. And then she realizes, oh, there's a yellow here too. It's like, you might have something to this. Uh, there may be a small thing to offer up in order to get this power. And that is? Well, apparently for this one, is it changes the color of my eyes. Oh, yeah. It doesn't seem so bad. Yeah. Oh, great. It looks like I have Wilson's disease. Um, Stop eating copper. All right. I guess uh, why don't we then uh, go deal with the bandits so that we can uh, explore the other half of the upper floor here. I would. I'm in. Okay. Hopefully they're as easy as those flaming skulls, huh? You guys had a lot of things go right for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, as they go through and you begin walking down, uh, Vilnius goes, oh, God, you guys are still alive. That's good. And then as you pass, um, you can hear Crispin be continuing to mutter about things he's writing into his journal. <laughs> Dear Diary, today was a good day. <laughs> like, it, it's like the weird part is it's still all exposition. <laughs> like, he hasn't talked about the friends he's made yet or the beers people have bought for him. <laughs> yeah. And surprise, yeah. To no one's surprise at all, the staff is still there, barring the doors. It is still there, you said? Yep. Sweet. All right, uh, let's um, remove the staff. All right, as you do that, uh, how would you like to open the door? Uh, very quietly. Very quietly, okay. Given the fact that you've rolled and I just don't want to keep on forcing these rolls when I know you're going to pass them, you do so. Okay. Or just roll a d20. If you, roll, just let me know if you roll a 1. If it's anything else, I don't care. It was a 1. Are you but, fucking kidding me? But I have an advantage on, on, on dexterity checks. Yeah, then go ahead and roll again. See if it's also a one. It was a 10. <laughs> you sat there and you thought about just blowing this door open with your foot and saying it's like well, how about that, cowboy? We got ourselves a standoff. Instead, you go, no, wait, let's be rogues. <laughs> uh, at this point, let me get my barbarians. Oh, Jesus. Yes, because when I say barbarian, I meant lizard. Thank you, roll 20. So there is our big guy. Be right back. And of course, I wanted TIE fighters. Thank you. All right. So anybody wants to do anything before we get started with this? Um, like what? Your choices. Uh, we'll get, uh, let me see what spells he has. Uh, I mean, he'll cast uh, Fog Cloud 
into the room. So the entire room is now filled with uh, like smoke. Great. Now I can't see what I was going to do. Well, you can do this at the same time, so it doesn't affect you yet. That's okay. No, go ahead and do it. No, I was just being a, um, obnoxious. Oh, okay. So uh, what you missed is that uh, Nephiron cast Fog Cloud into the room. Okay. So you like you can still see shadows. Like the room isn't expansive enough where anybody gets lost in here, but it's easier to kind of like move around stealthily. Are these guys asleep? No, no, they are making some noise, talking about their their raids. And their resistances, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage because they're barbarians. Before we go in, do we want me to cast web on them? What do you want? Mm -hmm. I get to make a 20 foot cube of uh, basically spider web that's difficult to rain and also slightly obscure, so, you know, not really advantage with the fog, but. Um, but any creature that's stuck in it uh, has to save to get out, and if they don't, they're stuck. Sure. Oh, Just I think they're getting the idea that uh, that's not marijuana smoke in the room. And the webs are also flammable, so if somebody lights them on fire, these fuckers get cooked a little. Ooh, cool. Alright, so I will use the webs. Okay, and then what kind of save do the people need to make? It's a strength save. Er, any creature that starts its turn in the webs or enters them during it is a dexterity. Okay. And any creature restrained, it's a strength saving throw. Against Failure. spell save DC. What's your spell save DC? That is... 15. Okay, failure, 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 failure. It basically Pass. covers all of that. Pass. So I'm just going to put marks on who hasn't failed. That guy. And the wolf. All five of the barbarians, however... Are all sticky. And at this point, I would like everyone to roll initiative. All right. The same simpler for me. Ooh, I'm gonna go like last. Twenty-five to twenty. Twenty-two. Okay. 15 to 20. 19. Alright, Tony, what'd you get? 12. And Laven, what'd you get? Uh, 7. First, worst. First, worst. <laughs> That's how we do it. Oh, shoot. Good. First two, second worst. First two, second worst. All right, Hagrid, you're starting up the battle. All right. uh, for my bonus action, I want to cast Sacred Flame into the web. All right. So how does the flammable web work, Mike? Mike? <laughs> All right. Damn it. Why does he have kids? <laughs> Rat bastard. Poor life choices. Okay. All right. I figured it out. So go ahead and you are attacking the web and not the creature specifically, correct? Uh, well, it was my, underst <clears throat> my understanding that the creatures trapped in the web might take fire yes. damage. 
Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you and I were on the same page. Okay, so that's going to change the AC a little bit uh, in your favor. So go ahead and roll Sacred Flame to hit. And is it this one you're going after or any specific one? Because the ones with the red dots, or at least I hope they're red, uh, yeah. are the ones that are not. Uh, um, I don't know. Can the web make a dexterity saving throw? Um, the web gets to last for one round, and it deals 2d4 fire damage when it's caught on fire, and it only takes out a five-foot cube. Yep, so essentially what you can do, like, this is just for you hitting it, so dexterity saving throw. Nope, it fails. I'm just going to sit there and say that uh, it auto-fails to make it simpler. All right, so it's a, sort of a cube, I guess, then. Yep. Uh, I guess I would have tried to target that guy. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a little shape here to remind me that this is on fire. Fuego. Fuego. Awesome. So that's going through. Go ahead and uh, make your sacred flame damage on the target itself. And then when he starts his turn, he'll take the additional fire damage. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Awesome. What else would you like to do? I'd like to move there so no one else is in range and then uh, switch out to my crossbow. Okay, done. So if that still allows me my action, I want to try and hit the uh, guy at the end of the room. Yeah, that's all okay. Go ahead and roll the hit. The dice. Oh, uh, it's, I don't think a four is gonna hit. So a four? I believe so. Unless it's a forty-four, then that definitely will hit. No, just a four. Okay. One of these days will be a forty-four. <laughs> All right, that brings us to the next person, Lucian. Um, all right. Um, I don't really want to get stuck in the the web, so um, I will cast uh, Eldritch Blast at um, yeah, at the big, big bad. Guy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's a. 14 to hit. No, sorry, 16. Uh, 16 just barely hits. Okay, cool. Um, let's roll. That's 18 damage. Oh, wow. Okay. And then I will... Uh, I'm going to take a step back. And I'm going to hold uh, my action uh, and attack with BAO until an enemy comes into range. Okay. That brings us to the bad guys. Uh, so that's 2d4 damage on that guy. And he's, on there. and he's hanging on by a thread. Everybody else needs to make strength checks to see if they get out of the webs. That's the failure. That one failure. Failure. Pass. Failure. So one guy gets out of the web. So we'll add him into the Freedom Fighters. Uh, this wolf is going to come out here and do some wolf things. I believe there's a held action for when it came out. Yeah. Did the wolf remake its saving throw? Yes. Okay. Here, dealing with kids. I'm a little distracted. Wolf's got like stupid high deck. Stupid wolf. Killed it. It's a 19 to hit? Well, I believe that hits, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then does that count for a sneak attack since uh, it's within five feet of another? Uh, because it is technically the wolf's turn, it triggered the action. I'm going to say no. Okay. Uh, at least based off of this. 
Uh, seven damage. Seven damage. Okay. Uh, he is going to make uh, th- three attacks at you, Lucian. That first one's going to miss. Second one is a 18 to hit. That hits. Third one's a 10. That misses. However, that will do seven piercing damage. All right. I'll use as Uncanny as Dodge it, to have it. As it nipped into what was aiming for your forearm and it got your pinky finger instead. <laughs> uh, at this point, uh, Smashy McGavin here has to make a save to get out of the web. It does, but because of difficult terrain, it can only get to about right there. Uh, so instead, he's going to uh, throw a uh, Warhammer at you, Lucian. And how does a 21 sound? No, that hits. Um, that is 13 bludgeoning damage. Yikes. Okay. Uh, as this one like hits you right on the top of the skull, there's a nice little indentation down as to where it hits you. Um, and then the hammer just flies uh, up and over the rest of the party. <laughs> Uh, that brings us to Tony. All right. Um, uh, in a bit of a pickle here. Um, uh, speak with kids. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Can I just, uh, poke the wolf in the face and cast light on its freaking snout. You can try. Let's see what happens. What do I need to roll? Let's just go with a uh, melee because uh, you're trying to use it as a touch spell. Melee spell attack. Um, I got a two. Yeah, I got a two. Uh, based off of all the like spastic motion of the wolf trying to uh, bring Lucian down via his pinky, you missed on your assault. Okay, well then could I brandish one of my hand axes and try and smack him with it? Yeah, sure. Uh, that is a total of 12. Uh, that unfortunately will not hit. And I'm um, spent. It turns out that... Uh, the, this dodging, while appears to be uncanny, is just a wolf spastically moving. Well, I'm spent. Yep. Yeah, that brings us to Esmeralda. Uh, Esmeralda is going to make a firebolt attack, and that will hit for 2d10 fire damage on the wolf. What does 14 sound like? That sounds like it burns. Uh, then that's going to bring us to Leaven. Alrighty, I am going to cast a uh, lightning arrow and fire at this dude. Uh, how's the 17 to hit? 17 will hit. Cool. So... All right, so he's going to take 48 lightning. Two, nine, 17. Uh, that's 18 lightning damage on that guy. Uh, hold on one second. Let me just finish sending this text. Uh, which guy? The one in the middle. Uh, the big man? Shot. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 18 lightning damage. And then everyone within 10 feet of that guy has to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, considering they're all restrained by the web, I'm going to say they all automatically fail. Sweet. So they will take oh, there's 11. No chance, but he fails anyway. Those guys will take 11 lightning damage. All of them take 11 lightning damage. So uh, this guy has joined the fate of the flammable. Uh, and 11, 11, 11, 11. Good turn. Mm-hmm. Yep, that brings up... Uh, anything else you want to do? 
Uh, I still have an attack, so I'm going to switch to my rapier and try to stab this wolf. Okay. Uh, 23? Oh, that should hit. That is worth... 8 piercing. 8 piercing, cool. That brings us to the end of the round with Neferon, and Neferon just goes... Um, looks around a little bit, kind of like John Travolta looking around um, Uma Thurman's house in Pulp Fiction, and then just snaps his finger in order to cast Fireball in the room. Failure, failure, pass, failure, pass. Uh, but that's still 8d6, which that's too many dice. I'm just going to roll this. For 26 fire damage, which is enough to wipe out everyone in the room. I'm sorry, I said that with a pen in my mouth. Which was 26 fire damage, which is enough to wipe out everybody in the room. Uh, however, the fog dissipates due to uh, uh, the rapid amount of heat, making it super easy for the air to hold more humidity. So he really undid his own spell. Alright, but I gotta get off and get ready for work. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, Hagrid is likely going to take out the wolf in his next attack anyway, so this will be a great stopping point. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. It was a pleasure. Uh, mm -hmm. Have yourselves a good weekend.